Hi and welcome to Lincolnshire Fen Crafts Needle Felting Tutorials. Today's tutorial is going to be about what I sort of, or what a lot of people consider to be the holy grail of needle felting, which is getting that really uh, perfect shape, which is firm with a really nice smooth finish. Now there are several ways to do this, but this is my latest technique and I have used this in my chicken needle felting kit. Um, but even though it's part of a kit, it is a sort of universal technique. You can use this for anything, but if you do want to purchase the kit, then the links are below and it's also available as a wool bundle and as a pattern. So that's Daphne. So Daphne is, is going to be our project today. And this is what we're going to be aiming for, which is that lovely smooth finished chicken shape so that we can add all our details on and as you can see here it's it's an awkward shape and there's there's rather than try and create the whole shape i find it's much easier to do that in sections so we are going to make it in three pieces which will be the main body and the head and the tail or where the tail is actually going to sit, which is here, because we want the sort of tail feathers to, to sit proud. So I have raised this area here. And then here is the head, and we're going to have the crown and the wattle and all the details in the wings along the sides here. As you can see, that is really nice and smooth. It's a, it's a lovely finish, but also it's firm, so it's springy but pops back quite easily. And that is what we're aiming for. And there's, and there's three ways to do this. It's reliant on three things. It's reliant on the wool that you use, the technique you use, and the felting needle. And adding a fourth one into the mix, patience. It's not difficult, but it takes time and practice. So please be patient with it. You will reap the rewards, I promise you. And I'm going to make it so easy for you to understand and work through at your own pace. I'm just going to pop that to one side. So we are using just for the, the body, we're using just two wool. So I'm going to be using a core wool and I have around 20 grams here for this particular body shape. And this is a really nice, soft, lofty core wool that I, I like to use. It's also great for for soft um, sculpture. But today we're going to be really firming it up because it shapes really nicely and it's quite inexpensive. If you want that core wool, I'll pop a link below for the shop listing. But um, it's as you can see, it's it's not carded and it's not wool tops. It's just nicely sort of lofty, but still easily shapes which is what we want we want something that we can really easily shape and then the trick to getting that beautiful smooth top finish is this carded batting and I've gone for a really nice white um I think this is Norwegian carded batting don't um it's definitely not Jacob or Shetland because they have a slightly more um natural colour so they're slightly um creamy whereas this is more white and that's going to give me that lovely finish and we're actually going to put two top layers on so again that's another part of the technique where we separate the carded wool into two sheets and then actually add two top layers so the first layer will be really getting the first layer on um so we've got that nice white color underneath the top layer we don't have to worry too much about the bottom layer because that's going to be covered up so we can felt it nice and firm and get it nice and smooth um, and that makes a big difference as well so we're going to start with the the um core wall now i'm going to there's about, like I said, there's about 20 grams there, I believe. Yeah, about 20 grams. I'm only, going to, only probably going to need about 10 or 11 grams of it for the body. So I'm going to just sort of put a third to one side. Well, a little bit more than that, actually, because we'll start with less than we need. I'm going to put that to one side, which will be for the head and the tail. Because, like, remember, I said we're doing it in three sections. Makes it much easier. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
excuse me. So this is just creating a really simple body shape. So all I'm going to start doing is before I even get on with the felting needle, I'm just going to roll it. I've got a 38 star. So this is just a standard 38 needle. You can use a 36 um, to get this going. So this felt nice and quickly and also it doesn't bend particularly easily around the tip of the needle so it's much less likely to break. And then what you can also do, although it's not necessary, I have here, this is um, a three needle holder and I've got finer needles in here and then I've got three needles and that really works this up quickly but the trick is if you're using a multi tool is to have the finer needles in you find if you've got all 38s or 36s then it might be a little bit tricky to sort of get through but let's just get this going and what this does is you're pushing those needles right to the center so we're firming up we're making sure that through that center we are catching all those fibers and tangling them together but as I said you can use um, just a single needle or tape two needles together one of my favorite things to do which works really well 238s I've got here and that works just as well so no need for any fancy gadgets And I'm using this for core wool. You can use anything, but I just like the way that you can really sort of get hold of it and tuck it in. And you see, that's all really lumpy and misshapen, but that's fine. Don't worry about that at all. So I'm just going to go back in here with my multi-tool just so I can speed it up for you. So this is just the sort of beginning felting stage. Just bring that over. If you are actually working from the kit, you will have a size and shape guide in your instructions. I think there's 110 photographs in there and around four and a half thousand words of instructions. So it's, it's um, as with all of my instruction booklets, that is the, the key to them. And so you'll have your size guide, you'll have a wool guide in there. And as I said, if you have the kit, you'll have all these wools in there, all ready for you just to sort of take out the box and go. This is um, this is the newest one, Daphne. A friend of mine has a chicken called Daphne, so we, I think it's her head chicken, so we head honcho. So we decided to go with Daphne. So can you see how that's now starting to firm? It's starting to shape and just by moving it around. And, the, and again, the trick is keep it moving. Don't continue in one place. And I'm not worried about these top layers because we're going to work on those in a little while. I'm really focused on getting a nice firm core so those needles are going quite deep because I'm getting all this fibre at the centre matted together and if you didn't know why wool felt so easily whether it's wet felting or dry needle felting as this is it's because they have barbs like little hooks and they all want to sort of catch hold of each other which is why if you've ever had any disasters with any sort of woolly items and they've come out the size of a doll's garment that's why because they've all shrunk so that agitation and that you know agitating the fibers which is what we're doing with the needles and um the heat all combine to shrink the wool can you see how that's becoming nice and firm now so I'm going to I'm going to go to a single needle again now. Make sure I've got that. Yeah, we'll be using a finer needle later on for the top layers. You don't have to, but it does help reduce the needle marks and um, create that really nice smooth finish. So as you can see now, I'm just sort of 
it, it wants to be nice and soft a nice soft shape and we will decide I mean that's probably going to be the back actually because it's flat already so I'll, I'll probably just keep that flat but I'm probably going to add some more wool as well to make it bigger but I will see it will get quite a bit bigger because we're going to put a double layer of carded wool on so this is not going to be its final size and then I'm just going to start going diagonally just so I'm, I'm working more now on these top layers because they're quite loose still as you can see but I can feel by the resistance as I go towards the centre that that's nicely felted so going diagonally always keeping that needle straight see what I'm doing there and you'll see how you will start to to flatten down and get rid of those lumpy areas and that's all about the the needle going in at a diagonal angle if you're just going in straight you're just poking more holes and creating more sort of lumpy areas so I don't think I'm going to add any more wool I'm just going to going to have this as my size but as I said if you are working from the kit or the pattern or you have the wool bundle bundle with the pattern then you will have all your weights and size guide there to help so let's just continue to really smooth out these areas so there we go so you can see you've got a nice sort of weeble type roll going on there which is what we want because we want that nice curve at the base and then we've got this nice sort of flat back area here which I've left like that deliberately and then it will actually we'll be able to to lift that and create more of a curve and that's the other thing as well the firmer it gets the easier it is to manipulate it with your fingers and then just reach over here anyone who follows my tutorials or is in the felt hub with me will know that I don't really go far without my trusty wooden barbecue skewer so it wouldn't really be right not to use it so th that's it that's your body nice and shaped that's the core anyway we will come back to that and work on it later because we're going to be adding two more things to it so here's the, the wool that I set aside I'm just going to take a little bit not quite half of that a few grams and we are going to create the head shape so the head shape is about so long but only this part is really firmly felted and you'll see that as we go on the rest is loose because we want to keep it loose so we attach it to the body so I am just going to sort of lay that down like so in fact I'm going to pull that in and then I'm going to wrap that around the skewer there and I'm just going to put my fingers there please be careful use finger guards if you need to and I'm just going to lightly felt just so that catches and I'll just do a little bit here as well so it's just so it's holding and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this wool around I'm just going to pull that little bit off because what I'm going to do is pop some more on if I need it so I'm going to wrap this wool around into a kind of sort of really rough cylinder shape and then I'm just going to start felting 
and again make sure your fingers are, out, are away aim for the center because we want to sort of felt that and then come up to the top layers turn it around and really start to work that wool and we're in no particular shape at the moment again grab hold of it so that it firms up more quickly keep working that and again we're not too bothered about lumps and bumps at the moment we will um even it out of course but again this is going to have two layers of carded wool on top so we don't have to be overly precious about it now can you see how i'm just working this one particular area and i'm leaving that quite loose and that's because that's going to be attached to the body and whenever you attach pieces to each other always leave the ends that are going to be attached quite loose it just makes the job so much easier and it means you don't have to sort of start using um, new loose wool when you attach it because it's pretty much unfelted and can you see how we've just got this sort of curve going on here and it's not even in the middle of the stick but it doesn't matter and of course you can do this freehand you don't need the stick but I um, oh look see how easy it is so I've bent that so I'm going to go to a different needle. I will still use that, but um, it is easy to do, especially when you're working around a wooden stick. I was a little bit keen there. It doesn't happen often. Just caught the stick at the right angle. That's why it's important you always use something that's quite robust because if you were using um, like the 40 here, which is um, much finer, then you will definitely end up breaking or bending the needle. So there we go. You can see how that's coming along nicely now and then just work around the top here. can you see how that shape's coming and then just down the sides a little and we've got all this nice loose wool here which we will use to attach to the body so I'm just going to pop that off the stick now and I'm going to continue to shape and firm And it's 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 just a very very simple shape. And now I'm going diagonally, as you can see, as I did with the body. And I'm just working down these sides now, just to firm that up a little bit more. And we can also build this up once it's on the attached to the body as well to make it nice and neat so that's really about it for the head and then for the tail even easier just grab a little bit of wool sort of scrunch it up fold it over so it's almost like a little sort of a really misshapen triangle and use your needle to get that going always use a topper if you can on your mats it will increase the life of them quite substantially and it also um especially with a hessian mat it will stop your work from sticking to the actual mat it's not so bad with this because it's three di mostly three dimensional but when you're doing flat felting which we will be doing um when i do the wings for the chicken then it's even more important but any mat will do foam mat like this one 
that would work absolutely fine you can use the 100% wool mats that I've got here they're great for three-dimensional like I said because you're not actually going through the mat itself it's just a base just to protect your needle and your surface so that's it that's kind of the tail done I mean I'm not particularly bothered about the shape because it's more about bulk and building it up and I will probably end up adding to that anyway so there you go you've got three pieces head tail and body and we're going to attach them so I'm just going to decide which is going to be my tail and I think I'll go with that as the tail and this is the head so pop the head on you see that just hold the loose wool with your fingers and keep it near to the front of the body you want this loose wool here sort of overlapping and then just with your needle start to work around the base just until it holds and it will it will flop about quite a lot but as you work around it will start to hold itself the important thing here as well is to make sure that you keep moving it if it if it sort of comes off center then make sure you actually change that positioning and work through here work right through in one spot and what you're doing is you're tangling the fibers in the body with the fibers those loose fibers in the head going off center there a little bit so I'm just going to put my hand there whilst I felt this area and again don't worry about all these lines and seams we will be covering all of those up and then we've just got this wall here so I'm just going to bring that round And as I said, this, it's all about sort of technique and time. The wools, you can, I mean, the, the carded wool really is, I, I think, is essential for the top layer of this. But the core wool, you know, you can sort of get away with most things. And that's going to be a little bit top heavy, but when we put the wings on later on, that will be fine because it will bring that weight back. And we can also curve it if we need to. So there you go, you've got this really odd shaped <laughs> thing going on here, which resembles, apps. I don't even know what it resembles, but it certainly doesn't look anything like um the end result but it will i promise so there we go so that's quite firmly attached i'm just going to work that down a little bit more i can feel that it's quite soft in there so i'm going to push my needle through And there we go that's firmed up nicely now so as I said it's very rough as you can see but that's absolutely fine and then the tail the tail will sort of end up as a as quite a lump really just on the end I'm just going to felt that down a little narrower leaving that loose at the end and it will all look very strange indeed until we start to tidy it up there we go so I'm going to pop that on there 
So I'm going to hold the end I've felted there and I'm going to felt that into its bottom. And if you keep your fingers out of the way like so, you won't poke yourself. But do use finger guards if you want. I find they just get in the way. I'd rather just prick myself. Okay, so that's sort of just hanging on there at the moment. So I'm just going to push that down. Now this here, I'm going to again, I'm going to felt that in and it will start to flatten. Turn it round. See there. And then I'm kind of going to sort of felt that to the actual body as well. So it sticks down a little bit. But we're going to put some top layers on this so we'll smooth all of this out. So really, I'm, I'm sort of, it looks up nothing like the end result. And that's the whole point with needle felting. It never does until quite close to the end most um, oftentimes. But I just find that doing this in sections is much easier. Because that top layer is going to skim across all of this. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start and tidy this up a little bit. So I'm going to take my core wool. I'm going to wrap a little, is that my core? I don't think that is actually, no. <clears throat> oh, I had a bit of core and a bit of carded there. That's why the, the colours look wrong. So I'm going to take a little bit of the core wool here. And I'm just going to gently wrap that around the seams of the neck. Because although it won't be visible, we want to make it as easy as possible for ourselves to actually... apply the top layers it's got um, a strange shape going on there so right if you pull that can you see pull that around the base of the neck and then just bring that along here. It doesn't matter really where you put it. Just sort of drag it out and thin it out. And then pull that around this side. Go up the head a little bit if you want. But again, this will all be covered up. So what we're aiming to do now is just sort of smooth it all out so that we're reducing those seams and then we just go diagonally down here come back to that in a minute so sort of final smoothing before we add the carded wool and just check the position again make sure we're happy with that now his neck looks a little bit skinny and I don't want that, so I'm going to add some more. Of the core wool, just around the base of the neck. You see? I just sort of tack that into place loosely. Keep it at the base. And then again, round here. And then felt that in so it's more even. Can you see now 
how that's building up. So we're building this shape. And then bring it up the head as well. So go in the other direction. And as I said, looking very sort of rough and ready, which is fine. But firmly felted on. So let's have a look, that's better. And then we'll just work down the sides. So, so yes, you can see all of those seams, not bothered at all, going to be covered up. If you want, you can just use your needle or you can even use your fingers just to tease that wool. And I'm just going to pop a little bit over the tail core wool and see what I've done there so I've just sort of covered up that big lumpy area but I've only used a very thin piece of core wool just to to cover it and bring that over there and now it's started to firm up nicely we can start to use our fingers just to sort of move any areas around that we're not happy with we just want to manipulate that shape so I'm just going to pull that back a bit and then I'm just going to pull that underneath So you can see now that that's starting to look a little neater. So now what we want to do is we want to start again working diagonally with our needle. So that we can smooth out these lumps and the base as well. We want the base to look as nice as possible. Although when we add the carded wool, the base will be where we'll be sort of spending most of the time needle felting. Because we can have a few more sort of needle marks under there. But we will then, as a final touch, add a really thin carded sort of uh, tiny wisps of of carded wool as a final layer at the base to cover up any marks that we need to. So there we go. Just going to get these loose bits. I'm going to look at it from the top and just look so it looks slightly wider at that side. Now you can continue to felt on this side so if you go diagonally you can flatten that down and remember you are going to um, have the wings on each side if it's a chicken that you're actually making so that's going to be bulked out anyway so I don't really need any extra bulk so if you just look at it from there that's looking a little bit more even and let's just felt down this tail here and again just continue to work and it is really worth 
taking the time to do this because look what you achieve for an end result it's really really worth the time and as i said you know everyone wants to know how to get a really smooth finish well it doesn't just happen you have to work the project to achieve that I would say as well, if, if you've if you've never needle felt it before, if you're a nervous beginner, then I wouldn't tackle this as your very first project. But if you if you've already crafted and you're a confident sort of beginner, um, then yes, absolutely fine. If you want to improve your needle felting skills as well, of course, um, work at your own pace and your own level. So there we go. This really odd shaped sort of mass that will become a chicken and again I'm just going to work those areas and I would normally spend a bit more time on that but I'm not going to for the video but that's that's looking pretty good. So that's taken to create that body shape. That's taken around 36 minutes. Which actually in needle felting time isn't isn't that long at all. So we've got that body shape. And it's um sitting quite happily but even if it wasn't it wouldn't matter again I'm just going to I've just noticed there this is what you do when you need needle felting you notice something I'm just going to pull that head back a little bit just want a nice smooth seam there going around the front Of the body here because this is the the bit that's going to be most visible so this is the the area and you, when when we add the carded wool um top layers then we'll really make sure that all the visible areas are the neatest so the top of the head is going to have a crown on the tail will have all the feathers so i'm not too concerned about that but the sides and the front which are going to be most visible Those are the areas that we'll avoid felting on or, you know, just sort of felting very little on. So there we go. There we have it. Body is now ready for its top layer. So for the top layer... We can start with our 38 and then move to our 40. I've just realised why my needle belt be, uh, bent earlier. It's because it wasn't a 38 I was using. I'd picked up the 40. So that just shows you how easily they break. If it had been the 38, it would have been fine. Top layer. Carded wool. Now I'm using batting because I want to wrap this like a blanket. So I find this the best thing to use. But what I want to do is I actually want to split it. You'll find carded bats come in sheets and you'll find that you can just open them up and separate them. And then I am going to, you may or may not have a thick or thin layer. So I'm going to use the thin layer as the base coat. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to sit the body like so. I'm going to lay that on top like a blanket. And then I'm going to take, I'll use my 40, you may not need it. I'm going to take my 40 needle and just gently poke where I know the crown is going to be. So whatever project you're working on, use those areas that are not going to be visible then i'm going to pull this down and around i'm going to pull that quite snugly under the base and i'm going to 
just gently attach it. I'm going to do the same with the rest. You see where we're at? And I'm going to pull this down here, but I'm going to make sure that I push into the gap where the back is. We don't want to overstretch that because we need that wool in there and if, it, if we pull it really tight it will um it won't sit nicely so what i'm doing is i'm just now drawing keeping my hand there and just drawing this all down now i've got a lot of wool here so all i'm going to do is i'm going to hold that end because it's carded it just pulls away really easily so let's just work this down and don't worry about any creases we can just use our fingers Pull that around, use our hands. Now, this is where we need to use our hands as tools even more than we would normally. So can you see, I'm, I'm felting quite a lot here. Remember, this is not the final layer, so it doesn't really matter about any needle marks. What we're aiming for here is a really nice, smooth finish, or as smooth as we can get it. So that, that top layer looks really um, spectacular. And can you see how just adding that top carded layer, just that one layer, which is half a layer really, has made a huge difference already. And with it being so white, it just, it looks lovely. And you see, and you can see the head through there from the, the core that we've done here. And then we're just going to, Diagonally, always diagonally when you're doing these top layers. Just work that down and then work it down the back of the head. Again, you're going to see needle marks on this layer, that's fine. But just don't overdo it. You want to create that nice shape and you see how we've lost all of those lumps and bumps it's like magic and you see how that's coming on and then here again we've got a lot of excess here so just hold on there and then just pull that off and we'll use those um, if we need to patch up any areas and then we pull that down I'm going to take you can pull just little pieces off as well. I'm just going to pull that down. Now, don't pull it over the head too tight because you'll create gaps. But I'm going to pop um, a little patch on there anyway because I can still see some of that core wool. You see the difference, how creamy that core wool, wool is? And then when you put the white on, how, how much different it looks. And again, you're working diagonally. And then just use your hands, make sure there's no sort of loose areas. Got a bit there, you see? Quite loose, so we want that tacked in. Because this is going to be our shape. You know, what we use as our sort of shape when we put that final layer on. So it's important that all those loose bits are tacked down nicely so we can find that shape easily. And that's why it was so important to work on the shape to start with. So you can see lots of marks on this. That's fine. This isn't your top layer. So just keep working. Look for any areas with sort of air in and flatten those down. And again, you can use your fingers. You can also, if you want to smooth it, you can roll it around in the palm of your hands. You can use, I've got nails, so you can actually use your nails or your actual needle. If you're using um, a more robust one like I've got here, the 38, 
I try not to do that too much with the finer needles. Again, they, they break easily. Keep those for the finer details. And the, um, the finer top layers. So I hope you're really enjoying the tutorial. I'm taking more time than I normally would, but I think it's important for the technique. Really appreciate you joining me and for your support. And I hope you're getting a lot out of the tutorials. There's so many now on the um, on the channel. I'm still not great with technology, but I'm getting there. There we go. So can you see, look how that shape has changed just by popping on that first top layer. And let's just keep working. You really can't rush this. You know the kind of sort of oh that'll do it won't work for this project obviously if you've got teens or older children doing it then that's completely different it doesn't matter but if you are aiming for that really perfect finish and this is what you need to do I think we're almost done with that layer. What I'm just going to do here is I'm just, I know the tail won't be visible. You don't really need to do this, but I'm just going to pop a little bit more wool on there. And now I'm going to use my 40, which is a bit finer. And I'm just working the top layer. I'm not going through too far at all. It's sort of just delicate little pokes, really. You're just tacking it on. Maintaining the shape. And then I'm going to pop a little bit on the head here. That's the... Um, I thought that was the hole we'd created. It's not. It's a little bit of grass, I think. So again, I'm just going to pop that on there. I'm going to go down diagonally. So keep a sort of little pressure on it. So sort of avoid felting at the top there as much as you can. And then just come down the back. Although that, that section here is going to be completely covered with um, this crown. And again, remember, we've got another layer coming, the final one. But I just really wanted to make sure it was as white as possible before we add that layer. And then we don't have any sort of see-through, creamy, sort of yellowy looking areas. There we go. And I'm just going to do some final positioning here. Looks a bit awkward. I'm just trying to get it into shot for you. There we go. And remember how weird that tail looks. I mean, it's really, I've probably used a little bit too much wool, but it won't matter because it's not even going to be visible because we're going to have this, you know, for this particular project, you'll have this glorious sort of tail on it. But this is a, a technique you can use for, for pretty much anything. Okay, final layer. So I'm now going to go to that lovely piece of carded wool that we separated. And I'm just going to take out any obvious bits of grass. You never get them out completely. Just take that little bit off there. Now that's thick there. So let's have a look. 
we're going to bring let's work from the thickest bit so i'm going to bring that up here and onto our base and to bring that around and onto our base there'll be a gap there but I, I can patch that up that's absolutely fine I want to wrap it over so there you go can you see what we've got going on in there and then I'm going to put my hand on its back and just tack that gently on as well and then I'm just going to use that needle just to draw that down we've got quite a lot of excess going on here so just gently down the head just before we we pull it all tight just want to make sure it's holding and you are going to get needle marks I mean there's no avoiding that but we'll get rid of them as we work and then we've got a lot quite a lot going on here I think I I've used I think you only need about five grams of this carded wool but you will start off with more than you actually need because you you want to make sure you've got enough to to wrap it around the entire thing And then just pull it nice and taut. You see how that again is starting to shape nicely. We've got a lot going on here. So I'm going to bring this side down now towards the sort of belly of the bird. And then I'm going to grab hold of that because there's way too much there. So again, just because it's carded, it pulls away really easily. And I might just to sort of fill out this front a little bit here, cross that over. because It's quite sparse there. I'll just drag out those gaps and tack that at the base here for the time being and then use your hands just to pull that around tack that in place pull it again so this is the top of the head that's the tail top of the head so I'm just going to pull that around to the underbelly of the chicken I'm going to use my hands again here. So again, there's nothing, this is not rocket science, it's not difficult, it's not even fiddly. It just is simple techniques and time. And if you haven't got much patience, then you know this this is not the project for you doesn't mean that needle felting is not for you but this does take time but if you do want to um have a go at some much shorter tutorials then they're all there on the playlists there's some things that take sort of 15 minutes to 30 minutes to complete there's bumblebees bunnies let's have a look what's going on here right let's just let's pull this out here I've got a bit of bulk going on yeah, there's bumblebees, there are bunnies, hares. Um, if you're brand new to needle felting, there are um, beginner's guides. I have a great blog, my ultimate guide to needle felting. And you could be on the blog for, well, there's lots of full projects, techniques, it's all on there. Everything that you need to know about needle felting, whether you're a complete nervous beginner or, um, you know, you, you're an intermediate or more advanced needle felter. There really is something for everybody on there. Right. There we go. So you can see 
see how lovely that is but this here which has got a little bit of air going on there so I need to I'm going to use my 40 if you can't tell if it doesn't really give much if it doesn't really give much sorry when I was shot there if it doesn't really give much then it's going to be a firmer needle if it bends quite easily then it's going to be a finer needle the finer the needle the higher the number so a 38 is a thicker needle than a size 40 and I usually put um, 38s in my kits as a really good all-rounder and it's what I recommend and it's what I like to use you see now look at the difference there I mean that is just looking really lovely and I really don't want to do too much more to it apart from tidy up the bottom which is looking a bit lumpy so I'm now going to go diagonally and can you see as well because I've used used those carded sheets the shape is transformed and it's so much bigger as well and actually now resembles Get those in shot for you the final chicken and what I want to do here is now I want to sort of just narrow those areas where there's I can feel the air I'm just working down diagonally then I want to work down the front again I'll work it always working towards that base and keeping that nice soft curve And you can continue to work that if you want to get rid of some of these marks then just use the 38 not your 40 and you can use the needle just to sort of drag that wool over once you've finished and you're happy with the final result and if you find that it is still um, a little lumpy then you can just take a really really sort of wispy thin piece of wool break that up and just lay that across the top uh, the bait the bottom there can you see how immediately use your 40 if you've got it you can use one needle for the entire project but the 40 does make it easier when you're trying to reduce the needle marks and when you're doing your your fine details so there we go I've just tacked that on barely and then I've just got a few lines here I want to get rid of so I'm just going to tease those out you can also use your hands and then you can also felt diagonally as well which will also remove them. So you continue to work on that until you're happy with it. I'm almost there, but I'm pretty pleased with that. It's um, sitting on its own quite nicely. And then when the wings are added on, it will tip back slightly so it's its weight will be slightly further back but i'm really pleased with that how that's gone um i hope you are continue to work on it until you're happy with it or leave it alone if it's already good enough stop fiddling put the needle away and the next tutorial i will show you how to create these perfectly shaped wings you don't need a, a cookie cutter or a stencil or anything like that they're really easy to make um, and i'll show you how to do that with my my sort of easy techniques and and quick wins tutorial for the wings so thank you very much for for joining me 
and I look forward to sharing the rest of the tutorial with you.